this is a very simple drum trigger. It takes not a lot of skill to build, and all of the parts and materials that you need to build it, um, you'll, some of it you could find in your local hardware store, and there are some parts you may need to either order online, or you might be able to find at a local electronics store, uh, or something like that. Uh, but I'm going to give you a brief description on how they're built, or at least how I built mine. And um, you should be able to, after this, you know, do something quite similar. So uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and show you what the materials are and, and basically on uh, how I built this. As far as the electronic components are concerned, um, these are about the only things you're going to need other than some instrument cable uh, to hook everything up afterwards uh, that will go from the end of this piezo element, which you can get quite cheaply from uh, any kind of electronics um, distributed online like Mouser or DigiKey. Um, you could also find them on eBay pretty cheaply too. And a lot of them will come with some leads already attached to it. And you're also going to need, um, again, some kind of plug at the end to plug it into whatever you're going to use, whether it's your um, interface for your computer or a drum uh, brain for an electronic drum set or something like that. It just depends on how you plan on using the drum trigger afterwards. And as, as I said, you also will need some instrument cable to solder the ends from the piezo element to what will be the leads inside of your uh, inside of your plug or jack or whatever whatever you plan on using. These are the materials that I use to build my uh, simple drum trigger. This is a metal plate that comes from the electronics department at um, at your hardware store. Uh, they're basically cover plates for electrical boxes. Uh, this is what I use to mount my piezo onto so that it has a, a larger surface to uh, basically catch the vibrations of when you're hitting it with your drumsticks or um, your hands or whatever. To attach the piezo to it, I used these glue dots um, which work out really well. It's a lot less messier than using things like super glue and it works much better than double-sided tape. Um, I also found these at the hardware store and they've been worked out pretty well with me for this project as well as some other projects. You're going to need some type of rubber surface to um, use to as a striking surface for your drumsticks and or your hands or whatever. Uh, this is a piece of rubber that comes from uh, these covers that you can buy at the hardware store that basically cover um, steps. Uh, they're non-skid, non-slip type covers, and uh, basically they're they're really cheap. They're maybe a dollar or two a piece, and I, you can cut them to size, and they and it worked out really well for this project. Another thing that you're going to need is something to wrap your project up with. Uh, and I use um, gaff tape. It's easier to work with, at least I think, than um, duct tape, and it looks better, it's stronger, um, and it works pretty well for this particular um, experiment. Now, as cushioning material, you're gonna need something to wrap around the metal plate and the piezo to keep it from getting damaged. This stuff, is basically um, foam packaging that I purchased at the hardware store. You purchase it in a roll and can cut the size. And I used uh, several different layers of this on each side of the metal plate with the piezo attached to it. And that provided enough protection. And it also gives it so that if you do use drumsticks, it gives the whole thing a certain amount of bounce and it lacks a little bit more like a snare drum or something like that. But uh, that's all you really need to put it together. Um, and I'll give a little bit of a brief description on exactly how I did that. So as I said, I used these glue dots to attach the piezo to this plate. 
and you basically only need to use one of them and you put it on the underside of the piezo where it's got this kind of brass looking area and you just attach it to the center of your plate or whatever type of metal that you plan on using. Um, I do like these cover plates though. They're, they're nice and rigid and they're cheap and uh, they've worked out well for any of the triggers that I've built so far. Once you have your piezo glued to your plate, you're going to want to attach a piece of instrument cable. Basically it's a, a mono cable, single st uh, strand core with uh, ground around it. And um, you'll attach a length to it, solder it to one end to this lead, to these leads. And then you'll put a plug on the end so that you can plug it into whatever you plan on plugging it into. Uh, personally, I plug it into my audio interface for my computer and I use software that is able to translate the signal coming in from uh, the piezo to a MIDI signal. Now once you have it glued to the plate, the piezo, and your soldering work all done, you're going to want to start wrapping some of this foam around the plate. Now what I did is I put three layers of it on top and three layers of it on the bottom. Once I was done with that, I took one side of the project and I taped a square of the rubber to it and that is going to affect be the top. Now to finish it all off, uh, you're going to want to try to wrap it up as, as neatly as you can with your gaff tape. And uh, basically, it, mine ended up being a, a square, and um, since the plate was a square, and uh, and that's really about it. So once your project is done, it, it may look something similar to this. This is the top with that or piece of rubber, uh, which is my striking surface, and I kind of squared it off with the gaff tape, and the back is just completely covered with gaff tape, and the whole thing uh, stays together pr quite well. I made a little slot in one side that lets the cord come out. And uh, that's really about it. It's a very simple project. It probably, you know, the first time I built one, it made me took me about a half an hour to build. And then, you know, as far as using it, it depends on what software you're using or what hardware. Um, in this case, I used um, a plugin in Reason that lets me translate the signal coming from here, from the uh, piezo, uh, into my audio interface and turns it into MIDI. And uh, that's so far what I've used it for, but I have some other ideas uh, that I plan on uh, using it for. I plan on building a possible, you know, a, a hardware interface that will um, turn the signal into MIDI, uh, possibly using Arduino. Okay, here is my setup and reason showing you how I get my cheap drum trigger to work with Kong. I'm using this Audio to CV rack extension and this Revolt CV processor rack extension to kind of dial things in to make things work a little better. Now, this is not the most ideal setup. Um, this is a drum trigger that you're, you're building for only about $5. So, you know, you can't expect, you know, something as good as a V drum or something like that. You know, it's, it's not going to be as good as a professionally made drum trigger, but it can work in many situations. You know, I'll show you here just tapping on it with some drumsticks. You know, it, it does work. Um, but again, it's, it's not the most ideal thing, and it's mostly something I built just for experimentation. And uh, hopefully it might be something that uh, you could build yourself and experiment with. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks.